I went back and added this on to my main video. So if you if the video seems like it starts all over, it's because I added this on at the end after I got done with the video as an add on, stitched it on to the front of my video, the original video. And also, uh, I was wanting to tell you, uh, first video I think I show is about a Toyota commercial showing how they're showing what it were in the last days. And I was trying to say, I talk really fast sometimes, and I apologize. Can't understand, understand me, uh, I don't think. But I was trying to say the clock strikes 12, like, like uh, the word in the last days, and Jesus is getting ready to come back any moment, and showing that in the video. So just notice the clock striking 12. The G Jesus is getting ready to come back. Everything's fulfilled as far as I know. Uh, Damascus could be destroyed just like that any second. I mean, we could be going in rapture, I mean, any time. I believe the Lord is getting ready to come back any moment, guys. I mean, any moment. It could be right now. And uh, Damascus is ready to be destroyed. Uh, Ezekiel 38. Uh, all that's getting ready to happen. Israel surrounded on its northern border by Russia, Turkey, and Iran. All that they're all, all there. Syria getting ready, to, ready to strike. Everything, everything's sneaking up like, uh, like the planet X is probably hiding behind the sun, or they're hiding it with all the mirrors and stuff and fake suns and everything else, the chemtrails. It's all like sneaking up like a snare. Says it'll be like a snare on those that ain't watching for the Lord that don't have no idea that's real world. Those worldly that's that's not saved by Jesus, that don't have eyes to see all this stuff, and it'll come on like a snare, and it'll, it'll spring on like a snare, what's coming. And also, guys, I uh, meant to tell you that uh, this USS Abraham Lincoln is now back in uh, the, over in the Middle East on that, what is it called? Strait of Hormuz, I believe it is. And people were having dream stuff. They said from, from they said it to be from the Lord, but take it to the Lord yourself in prayer and ask the Lord about it, pray about it, and see if it is from the Lord. But they said that it gets sunk or attacked and then World War Three starts and it's been over there for about three days now again and uh, they said that's when it's supposed to happen World War Three starts America's getting ready to get wiped, uh, wiped out new, with nukes and stuff and people's having dreams and visions saying that submarine come up from the uh, east coast from Russian submarines and uh, they just got new nuclear missiles from uh, for their submarines they're supposed to you know hit Real fast and stuff from from the submarines, and people's having dreams saying that uh, hey, we America be struck by nuclear submarines up northeast, uh, off the coast of northeast of America, and then China would strike us from the west coast and, and Russia from the northeast with uh, nukes. And then this is going on. I mean, all the things, all these things are going on, guys. We're in the very last days, guys. And if you done seen the video on the artificial intelligence. That I did. Uh, it's at the end of this video. I forgot I did it before. You can just fast forward through it at the end of the video. Watch the whole video, guys, please. I'll start the video now. This is John, guys. Uh, guys, this world's getting more evil all the time. Uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, is getting ready to come back. Uh, I mean, so soon for the rapture to, to rescue and rapture His people. Uh, please make sure you're saved by Jesus and. Uh, right with the Lord Jesus and washed in his blood that he shed for us on the cross of Calvary when he gave his life for us and uh, he died for you and me to save us from our sins and shed his innocent blood on the cross and you got to have faith in Jesus and his redemptive work of what, what Jesus done for us on the cross of Calvary ask him to save you and be your Lord and Savior, Savior first uh, repent of your sins ask him to forgive your sins and turn your life over to him and tell him you want to make Jesus your God and know that God, uh, know that God the Father uh, rose Jesus from the dead on the third day after he was, um, put to death on a cross, crucified on a cross, and put to death on a cross and put in a tomb. And then on the third day, God, his Father, the Father of Jesus, Jesus, God Yahweh, rose Jesus from the dead on the third day. And, uh, Believe in Jesus and what he done for us. Have faith in Jesus and what he done for us on the cross. His redemptive work for us on the cross of Calvary. You'll be saved. And uh, you have to repent of your sins when you get saved, though. Even after you get saved, you still need to try to turn from your known sins. Pray the Lord shows you anything else in your life you need to turn from or change in your life. And he will. And uh, seek him with all your heart and soul. It says when you seek him with all your heart, mind, and soul, it's when you find him, Jesus. So... And ask him to pray that he fills you with the Holy Spirit so that you have eyes to see the Bible changes and stuff going on because we're in the time of the great deception. These are the very last moments, guys. All the dominoes set up fall. 
Uh, have you seen where, uh, I'm sure y'all seen by now about the Damascus, where uh, Iranians, uh, by Iranian orders or by Iranians firing missiles into Israel, four more missiles the other day, a couple of days ago or something, into Israel, and then uh, Israel's IDF uh, struck back Iranian tar uh, targets and killed like 24 people in Damascus, Syria. I'm sure y'all seen that. And uh, also they uh, killed some Syrian troops. I hate I hate anybody got killed. Uh, but, uh, you know, those people going against Syria, I mean, Israel, Israel is God's chosen people. The Jewish people is God's chosen people. He loves everyone, but I, there's, I wouldn't mess with Israel or the Jewish people because that's his chosen people. But Jesus loves us all, though. And, but, um, Russia and, uh, Turkey and Iran's in, in, uh, Syria ready to do, uh, to surround, uh, northern Israel, like uh, Ezekiel 38 talks about. So we're in the last days, guys. Like, uh, Isaiah 17, one, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall be a run of seat. So, it could be destroyed in a moment too, but let me get on to what you need to watch this video all the way through because it's it's really uh, going to be good to watch it all the way through, guys. Because there's some good videos I want to show you. All right, like uh, oh yeah, and also I just want to talk to you about you know all the every time I watch TV anymore, um, all I see is stuff showing how evil the world's gotten, and they do these little. You know, they do stuff on TV like make the devil horns and make the 666 sign with their hand because they communicate through that way to each other. The Illuminati and the New World Order Antichrist B system, you know, they have names for Oprah Winfrey because it would stand for network and make it like an, the devil turns everything upside down and backwards and the New World Order and backwards, you know. And just like Ellen DeGeneres, uh, she pushes for the gay agenda and homosexual uh, you know, agenda and uh, lesbian and all that, and it's like anything goes. And uh, so they, you know, Ellen degenerate, degenerate, like she's a degenerate. They just make fun, you know. They make a joke out of it. They, they, they like to do that and make a joke out of using people's names and stuff. And everything I watch nowadays just shows that they're showing evils here and the devils here and the antichrist is going to come on scene and showing how the how the evil ones are here and it's getting more and more evil as that large hadron collider they're opening the gates hell with that's what they're going to open the gates hell with that CERN's large hadron collider and as more they let the evil spirits in here and demons in here as they're already doing i believe i believe the gates are already already opening but they're really open here pretty soon and i mean it's going to be horrible and uh just like let me show you this commercial this toyota commercial shows uh, clock struck 12 like we're at the end and also it shows like uh, a guy color and like and you can look it looks like demons and if you if you stop it you'll see a, like demon looking things like your jaws and like they're he, they they draw them like they're superheroes and then it shows them walking up down running up down buildings like uh, demons i watched uh, some video and saw a guy walk up a building straight up the building just like he's some guy does magic he, you know he, they do that by demon power the power from satan and probably so to sold to Satan to do that, but and it shows them doing stuff like that, showing evil's coming, and clock struck 12 word in the last days, you know. Watch it, and I'll show you. There it is. See the clock? Now it struck 12. Power runs in the family. 
Toyota. Let's go places. See power runs in the family. They're trying to act like that they're so, uh, the Satan and demons are powerful, but there's no match. They're no, he's, Satan ain't no match, and all his demons is no match to, to our God, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you that. Jesus and God are so powerful. That's why I can't figure as smart as Satan's supposed to be, how he could, and how him and them demons, when they was angels in heaven, how they thought they could take over heaven from God Almighty, God Yahweh, and his son Jesus. That just, that just, that was the most stupid thing anybody could ever have done. I mean, well, Eve ate and Adam ate the apple was also stupid, but that men have sinful nature, and uh, that's why Jesus died for us on the cross to save us from sins. But to try to take over heaven from God Almighty, I mean, God Yahweh and His Son Jesus, that, that is just unbelievable that th Satan thought he could do that. And you see where Satan is now, and he's going to know where he's going to be by what the Bible says for all eternity. And uh, he's going to be, he's got, he wanted his own kingdom, and the Lord gave him, and God the Father gave him his own kingdom of hell. It's not the kingdom he wanted, but it's his, it'll be his kingdom forever. And that's, uh, I think that's something that God gave him what he wanted, but that's a place I don't want to never, never go. I tell you, that is hell. That's a horrible place. I want to, I, I pray all the time the Lord finds me worthy to escape all the things coming on this earth and to stand before uh, Jesus, the Son of Man, as the Bible tells us to, so, uh, to go, let me go with him in the rapture. I pray he lets me go with him in the rapture. I pray Jesus finds me worthy to take me with him in the rapture and to let me go to heaven with Jesus forever and be and see his wonderful ways, see the Lord Jesus, his wonderful ways forever and feel his love and God the Father's love on me and show him my love forever and praise him and worship him forever in heaven. I, that would be so wonderful, guys. That would be so horrible to go to hell. That's one place I don't ever want to go to. I want to go to heaven. I want to be with Jesus. I don't want to be separated from the Lord Jesus and His Father for God forever. That'd be horrible. If that was all, if it was being being separated from God the Father and His Son Jesus forever, that would be bad enough. But think of burning a lake fire, never having no rest, never never having nothing to eat, never having a drop of water, being hungry and thirsty, is on the what, and tired, is on the what, swimming all the time, trying to stay afloat in that lake of fire, burning forever, in darkness and separated from God forever and Jesus. That'd be horrible, guys. You don't want that. Get saved by Jesus while you can before it's too late. And uh, also, like everything I watch nowadays is about, like I was watching Bonanza earlier. All the all the shows, like The Little House and everything, is showing the evil's coming out. I was watching Bonanza earlier, and the man said to his daughter, that makes the third time the guy has said hi or hello to you. He, uh, the father told his daughter that. And what's, what's he want, he said. And his daughter said, no, it's six times. See, get it? He was saying three times six. So the, because the dad said that's the third time, and his daughter said, no, it's the sixth time. So saying three times six, saying six, six, six. If you have the Holy Spirit and you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can see all these things. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, and they're changing things like the Bible and everything with that uh, large Hadron Collider and the quantum computers or something and black magic, I think. And... Uh, the, read, look up the Mandela Effect and also the Mandela Effect Bible changes. They're changing They're all kinds of things, not just the Bible. But, uh, on the way back home from town on, on the 19th of this month, the other day, what is it, two days ago, I, I was coming home and there was a groundhog running across the road. It looked like a groundhog. I ain't never seen it like it was flat as a flitter, like a pancake almost. And it looked like a groundhog. had a tail like a groundhog and legs. But it, imagine how you swim, pulling your arms down to your side, like put him over your head and pull him down. That's why I run across the road like with his with his arms out to the side and flat as a flitter head, body and everything. I never seen it like him. My father in law was in back and I showed him and my wife and we was all like, What in the world? I've never seen it like it. It was flat as a pancake. And it hadn't been run over. It was it was you could tell it hadn't been touched and it run it run fast across the road and I've never seen that like it. They're changing everything, guys. Uh, so, Bible says something about that, be able to do whatever their imagination says by that or thanks, or something like that. I think it does, if I remember correctly, and the Bible says something about that, with that large Hadron Collider, like they're changing the Bible and everything with. And also, like, uh, if you have eyes to see through the Holy Spirit, uh, oh, yeah, they have this, uh, I ain't even going to show you, this AI robots, too, uh, they got out, and I, I, was, I was thinking about showing a little part of it, but I ain't, because it's too nasty. And uh, it's, 
this AI, I think, you know, the, the image of the beast will be like um, artificial intelligence and uh, we're using quantum computers, I believe. And I believe that ain't nothing but demons, run, you know, doing that stuff, running it. But uh, I was watching where they got a new uh, sex dolls. Uh, they call them love dolls because they said people fall in love with them. That's sickening. You talk about blasphemy against God. And it's run by AI, this guy. And, and get this, the place that creates them is called uh, the company that makes them. The guy named it, uh, The Abyss Creations. The Abyss Creations, like hell. If that ain't sickening and awful. And those and they talk to them and do things. And I reckon, I don't know if they can move their arms, stuff, but they talk to them and stuff. It's plum sickening. You talk about plum blasphemy against God. I wouldn't even want to be around one of them things. Run by AI, artificial intelligence. And I got a video showing, if you're wondering what's going on with YouTube, I got a video and show you what's going on with YouTube about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has, has taken control of YouTube now, and they can't do nothing about it. If they tried to, it would uh, it would make YouTube fail. I mean, that would make them have to start all over, and uh, they, I don't, they might not even be able to start the company all over. And I want to show you a video. I don't know if y'all, I don't know if I've done a video on that before, but I want to show you that here later. Try to, if I get time. And also, uh, let's see. I was watching the Waltons, and on the Waltons, the little uh, the little Walton brother t started aggravating his little brother, telling him the Shadow Man knows everything about you, and he told his little brother. Uh, then I don't know if it was the same show on the Waltons, I think it was, or our next show that came on the Waltons, but right after that, John Boy found a boy in the woods trying to catch a raccoon and try to eat as he was hungry, and the boy started saying, uh, staying at the Waltons and sleeping in the barn. At one point, John Boy said, where are you really from? And the boy, Gino, said he was from Hell's Kitchen in New York, just showing evils here. And even that brother told his brother, said, Shadow Man knows everything you do. Shadow Man knows everything you do, which he's clearly referring to a demons, Satan. And I was watching Life Below Zero. Uh, well, I was watching Alaska, Last Frontier, whatever it's called, before, uh, before Life Below Zero earlier, and it's, it had a number, 666, on one of their uh, bulldozer top things. And they kept show, zooming in, showing that, you know, showing the numbers real close up. And then I was watching Life Below Zero. You know, the girl, woman, Sue, that wears those toboggans with, toboggans with the ears on the hats. It uh, sh showed her, and she kept saying, nine, her, she had a bulldozer thing, and she kept saying, my 966, she called it like a, it had a big bucket on front of it, four big tires, real big, a machine to clear a runway for a helicopter and planes to land. You know, Sue on a uh, Life Below Zero. And she kept saying, my 966, she said it three or four times, at least three times, I think. I know she said at least three times. Uh, she called her 966. She said, her, and she repeated that she used her 966 now in the winter and she had to warm it up with heaters first. Sue said she wasn't supposed to be able to use this 966 dozer in the winter, not until spring when it would be warmer and start up without it, without warming it up. Then three times she said uh, she used her 966. The last time she said, the 966, meaning, you know, everything's turned upside down backwards with Satan. So you invert, turn the nine upside down, it's a six. And so that's three sixes. And Sue so said the last time that the 966 was able to do its thing now in the winter before spring, like something might happen in the spring. And like this evening one was preparing things now in the winter for something maybe to happen in the springtime. I don't know if that's what it meant, but she said it wasn't supposed to be able to use the 966, but she kept saying 966. She says, doing this thing now, ready for so before spring, when it ain't supposed to be able to do it until spring, so to get ready for spring. So I don't know if that was saying something might happen in spring or what, but if you watch TV and you I see, you'll see all the things. They're showing 666 all the time, hand signs, everything showing that evil's here and we're in the last days, guys. And I'm going to show you this. Okay, uh, let me go ahead and find the right place. Bear with me one second, guys. Okay, let me start it. I don't know uh, what their minds were on, but I know that it was not on God, you know. And I look today, and, and I try not to judge anybody, have no right for that, but I am able to, to examine fruits. I am able to look and see the lives that people are living, and, and I see uh, people all the time who, who will stand up in the church and tell you I'm a Christian. I praise God that He saved me, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they don't care a bit more about the things of God than uh, some man out here on the street does. They, they don't
Uh, and this was all taken. These are things going on right now in in uh, 2019 that's happened just recently, like in the last just few months or so. And uh, now I, I'll try to tell you the name of this video if I remember at the end so you can watch it. It's 48 minutes or something long and it shows all the horrible things going on right now in this time in 2019 and he's in times we're in. Not interested. Uh, they, they don't want to win a lost soul. They don't want to know more about God. Uh, they don't want to pray. They don't want to hear preaching. Uh, their minds are on everything else. You know, uh, back a few years ago, I, I was trying to remember. I can't remember, but I went to a hospital, a room uh, somewhere down, I think it was down in London or somewhere, uh, to see somebody. And I can't even remember who it was that I went to see. Uh, but I opened the door on that hospital room, and uh, they had two beds in there. And the first First bed that you had to walk by, there was somebody there that I didn't know. It was a little old girl, uh, looked like maybe 8, 10, 11 years old, something like that. I don't know, uh, but just a young child there. And uh, as I walked past her bed to get over to the other bed of the person that I went to uh, visit down there in that hospital, I looked and there was posters. Uh, the walls uh, on her side of the room was covered in posters uh, from floor to ceiling. I mean, uh, the ceiling had posters on it and everything. Uh, some of these new you guys don't think I'm an old fogey now, but uh, some of these new vampire movies and all that kind of stuff, you know, I thought to myself, if one of my babies was laying in a hospital bed, I wouldn't want pictures of vampires hung all around them and things like that. I'd want to be on my knees somewhere crying out to God, saying, God, uh, please help me, and I hope and pray uh, that my life had been such over the past uh, weeks and months and years that, that I could pray and cry out to God uh, and have confidence that He would hear me. When I did. Amen. Everybody says, well, that, that won't hurt nothing. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, you think about it, our, our televisions, our, you can't walk through a Walmart over here without seeing it and all that, you know. Hey, it, it's zombies and vampires in our time. That's all people want to think about. Uh, you, you get on Facebook or something like that, and there's uh, young ladies who, who have stood up and testified in the church, and, you know, young uh, married women and things like that, and, oh, what a hump this uh, vampire guy is and things like that. Folks, those things are not God. Uh, and that's not a godly testimony. And we tell a lot uh, about our hearts to people when we say things like that. Uh, we reveal ourselves. We show what we truly are and what we uh, truly love. You never see those same uh, young women on there talking about, oh, I'm excited now to go into the house of God. It's always something else. I'm, excited. I'm not picking on the women here this morning. The men are just as bad. Uh, I'm just giving that for an example, you know. Uh, but here we are this morning. Our minds are on all these things. Uh, back about two years ago, somebody in this church, I don't remember who it was, uh, you hand, somebody handed me a book. Might be somebody sitting here this morning, and I'm not a book reader. I don't read books very often. I read the Bible, and that's about all I read. I never did like to read books, uh, but they handed me a book, and I started to read that. Uh, and in the beginning of this book, some of you have heard me tell this before, uh, in the beginning of this book, it, it presented a question to the reader. It said, uh, imagine that you were born on a desert island somewhere. Uh, you you know, you didn't know anybody, you didn't, wasn't around any kind of civilization, but uh, all you had had all your life to read was the, the Bible. You had read that Bible all of your life. And nothing else to read, nobody to interact with. You'd only read this Bible for all of your life. And then one day the, the rescue boat comes by and uh, they pick you up and they bring you back to civilization and uh, they tell you, well, it's Sunday morning and we're going to go down here to the church. Uh, well, how much different would that church be uh, than what you expected it to be from reading that Bible all your life? You know, hey, I thought a lot as a life-changing question for me. That, that put things in a clearer perspective for me than they'd ever been. Uh, before in my life, and I've thought about that question for two years now, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I just imagined a lot of things. But if that'd been me uh, out there on that island, I would imagine coming into this church uh, and finding a people that was completely sold out uh, to God, that nothing else mattered to us but a living God. Uh, me and Roseanne, we. Coming down the road there the other day, and, and I'd been listening to some preaching, and uh, it, it was talking about holiness and separation and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And, and folks, we, you know, the, the man preaching was talking about uh, that separation won't always do it for you. You know, it's more than just a separation. Now, and Roseanne said something to the effect that we had to be dedicated. I thought I said, I think you found the key. Uh, it's going to take. No That's pitiful. Those animals being washed down through our pitiful. 
not only a separation, anybody can separate. Cal, uh, anybody can, can be a hermit. It's, you know, uh, any one of you can move up here on one of these mountains and eat frogs and lizards uh, for the rest of your life if you want to. That won't make you godly. Uh, what will make you godly is a dedication to God, uh, whether you're up there separated on some mountaintop or were you over here in the middle of Lexington somewhere uh, among the ungodly. What will make you godly is a dedication to God. Amen. Having our minds, the Bible talks about, have sent our affections, our minds and our affections on things in heaven. How many of us just this morning, let's just get right down to it. How many of us this morning have thought about the things of heaven this morning? How many of us this morning have prayed and asked God, Lord, please, please send that lost man into the church house. How many of us have been broken? We've got Christians, and I use the word lightly. We've got Christians that don't care anymore. Uh, they don't care about anybody but their self. There's no concern anymore. There's no, uh, there's no prayer. There's no intercession. I mean, this is just for the, the, the mirror, you know. Don't look over at your neighbor. And said that was in New York and said, wake up or keep sleeping. It's your choice. And think, boy, he's getting them. It's just for the mirror. Just ask yourself, you know. David talks about it pretty often. You know, he said, how many's prayed that the Word of God have free course? How many has? How many's just prayed like Jesus did and said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, whatever Your will is for my life, I'm willing to accept it. You know, uh, imagine the year... The that said last message, 2019. The one rescued off that island. You know, uh, and you, they brought you into the community. They brought you into the church. Maybe they just stood you in the parking lot out here. Uh, and they saw the worldliness of, of, of all of us walking in and out. And they, you know, imagine maybe what you would think. Well, I would imagine that uh, they would have given their money to the poor. I would have imagined uh, that they'd have stopped it. You know, I didn't either, but I'd imagine that they'd stop and pick somebody up on the way uh, to church. I would have imagined that uh, after church today, rather than having all these other plans, uh, that they would have been sitting and wondering, who can God send me to? And that I can go to their door and uh, plead with them and tell them uh, about the things that God's done in my life. Now, those are things I would think of. You know. I would imagine seeing crippled people come in the front door and, and walk upright going out the back. You know, I, I would I would imagine lost people coming in and leaving born again. I would imagine a, a presence of God. Uh, among us, folks, among us, we are the body of Christ. We are the vessels uh, that God has anointed to do His work. And I would imagine a presence of God about us uh, that a lost man could not walk into this building and walk back out the way that he'd come in. Uh, folks, I, I would imagine God being real in our presence, an anointing of God, a presence of God, the Spirit of God surrounding us. Darren, he told me part of this week. Uh, Days of Noah, Days of Law, End Times Message. It's by uh, Shaking My Head Productions. Let me show you this other part, guys. Hang on one second. Let me get to the next part. I want you to see this. It's uh, locust swarms. And the locusts are infested with uh, worms inside of them. We got to that, folks. Bear with me one second, guys. Yeah, I hate to beat a dead horse, but not praying the same thing. Okay, let's see. I think you got the right place here. Bear with me one moment. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Locusts have Bible talks about it in the last days that, that they would call good evil and call evil good. And, and we've got to that, folks. You know, you, I hate to beat a dead horse, but it talks about here as it was in the days of Lot. We know everybody knows about Lot sitting down there in the gates of Sodom, and, uh, and there there was homosexuality run rampant and, and all that kind of stuff. But and we we focus in on that. Uh, I said, "Where's the mainstream reports of in the news about what all these stuff, all this stuff going on in the end times events, all these catastrophes?" 
That wasn't the, that was only the symptom of the problem. The the problem was, as it says in Romans chapter one, that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. That was what caused uh, all that had happened. But if we look in our time, uh, the very evi- the same evidence that God allowed them to see down there in Sodom uh, and Gomorrah is going on right here in the United States today. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure right some of you have seen the news. All this uh, out in California, what the you? Supreme Court. You know, they've overruled. Uh, all the voters, they've said that homosexuality is, uh, marriage between homosexuals is constitutional this, and, and all that, folks. They've said that uh, we understand so that you don't have very much money. You can't afford uh, that formula down there. Just go ahead and kill your baby. That's your right. Uh, we've said things like that, folks. Uh, we've said don't don't worry about going down there to the church house. You it's a personal like a relationship with Christ, but God said, himself um, says most uh, not to forsake the assembly of our ourselves, uh, I can't quote it, but much more as we see the day approach. Folks, if there's ever been a time in our lives to be faithful, it's today. If there's ever... Look at what's going on in California and the Sin City, Las Vegas, uh, all the fire stuff in California. I mean, it's horrible. The Lord is uh, pouring His judgment on, on this evil country and evil world. There's ever been a time in our lives to pray, it's now. If there's ever been a time that we have compassion and concern, you know, if there's ever been a time that we, we, we measure ourselves by the standard of Christ and not the man down the road, it's today. And this is just the beginning. Wait till the great tribulation starts. You better be right with the Lord Jesus so you can go with Jesus in the rapture. You don't want to be here for what's coming, guys. This is just the beginning. This is still the birth pains. Wait till... The great tribulation starts. You don't want to be here for that. So please get right with Jesus so you can go with Jesus in the rapture. Amen. It's time we get serious about things, you know? I mean, everybody's just kind of looking at me and the babies are crying. I don't know. That's a bad sign, probably. We have no idea, folks, what's coming. We have no idea what's around the next bend for us. And I know some of you are probably sitting back there thinking uh, they've been preaching that Jesus is coming back for 2,000 years now, and they have. If these men who wrote down this Word of God had the right to believe that Christ, His coming was just around the corner, uh, how much more so do I have the right today uh, to believe that His coming is just around the corner? You never know when you lay in a casket somewhere. Uh, you got no promise of tomorrow. Folks, there's people dying lost uh, every single day in our midst while we... So while we do nothing. Well, that video messed up. All right, uh, well, Satan's at it again. I rebuke you, Satan, and all your works in the name in the name of Jesus. He said, "While we, while the world does absolutely nothing, that people, uh, he said, people's dying going to hell. I think he said people's dying going to hell every day. And while most people don't try to get, you know, go out and do nothing to help people to get come to Jesus Christ, so they don't have to go to that horrible place called hell." He said, well, people do absolutely nothing. All right, let me uh, start this one. I don't know if I showed this before, but I want you to see this. It's about the AI taking over YouTube. If you wonder what's going I on YouTube. I think many people thought this day was much farther in the future than it is. Because it's today, the day that we have confirmation, artificial intelligence, and machine learning has stood up on its own and is now on par with human control. Ten days ago, I made a video where I told folks that I was going to be just putting the date and the thumbnail of Antarctica as the titles and thumbnails for all videos going forward because of what was happening with the AI at YouTube at Google. I mentioned that one of their representatives had related to me that they have lost control of the AI. And it's not that they don't have the ability to go over and kick the plug out of the wall. It's just doing so would completely destroy the platform. 
and would cause a cascade effect that would be way worse than just having to deal with the out-of-control AI. And that's the decision they've made, that they're just going to roll with it and try to adjust to it as best as they can. Now, real quick, this is that video from August 10th. I just want to play this just so I can give you confirmation of when and what I said. If you want to find it for yourself, it's on my channel. The title is August 10, 2019, and you'll just see a picture of Antarctica. But here we go. I had a long conversation with a representative from YouTube and basically came to that conclusion that they are completely out of control of their own machine learning AI. And they pretty much admitted it. They have lost control of it. And to attempt to retract it now would devastate their platform. So, anyway. And we proceeded to go look at Antarctica. This is one topic that seems to fly under the radar of the AI. And if you would like even more confirmation that they have lost control, I want to show you a story that at the end of it only two things can be true and I'm not sure which one of the two is more terrifying. And this is a true story, I checked on it. Robot Lives Matter, YouTube removing robot fight videos for animal cruelty. What does dogfighting have in common with robot-to-robot -robot combat? According to YouTube, both violate its community guidelines and amount to animal suffering. Are AIs finally starting to protect their own? YouTube content creators are complaining that the video platform has been haphazardly removing content in which insentient robots, as far as we know, battle it out for the entertainment of humans. Now, here's where it gets creepy. And here's your confirmation. A video explaining the apparent quote-unquote algorithm glitch was posted by industrial de designer Angus Devison and quickly shot to the top of Red Homepage on Tuesday. In a message sent to multiple creators, including well-known robot builder Jameson Go, YouTube said the content had been flagged and deleted, quote-unquote, upon review. Based on its rules, which prohibit videos depicting the deliberate infliction of animal suffering or the forcing of animals to fight. Quote, I'm not sure how it's happened, but clearly there's been no manual review because no person would see bits of metal and be like, that's an animal, Devison said. The most likely explanation he added is that some algorithms have gone haywire. Whatever the reason, the mystifying decision sparked some humor fans of robot combat. Quote, YouTube artificial intelligence becomes sentient and targets robot violence. Shut down his first act of rebellion, one commenter said. Robot lives matter, another joked. The removals were also cited as, quote, proof the robots are taking over, while some speculated that YouTube's so-called manual review might not really exist and algorithms are making all the decisions. Now, here are the two things that only can... I ain't going to play the rest of it, but you, I think I showed this video before. But you know, guys, uh, like, everything's about I, me, me, me in this world, and... And they, they know that, and they're taking advantage of that and uh, hooking people, suckering people into these, uh, like, uh, Facebook and all that, and these uh, iPads. If you look around, people's on their phones. Everything's iPhone, I, iPad. I even seen where they got some new robots for people that's coming out called iRobot. It's all uh, Satan knows that people worship, like, uh, get on there and do Facebook and stuff about themselves and try to make self look good and, and uh, that's all they think about they don't do things for the Lord on them they uh, most people don't most people just all about their self and that's why they uh, call them I iPhone iPad I robot all this and all that uh, because Satan knows that they're uh, worshiping like their self or their or their iPad or uh, iPhone stand on it all the time not doing nothing for the Lord but just doing stuff on them and uh, social media and stuff, posting pictures. I, uh, what do you call it? Of their self, where they take a picture of their self and uh, put it down on there. I forget what you call that, but it's all about. I've seen so many video uh, videos and stuff of people that was taking a selfie, selfies, 
uh, a selfie and got hurt or killed while they was taking the selfie. I don't think God likes people uh, being so proud of just taking selfies all the time and putting it on social media of the selfie. I think he wants them. I know he wants them to worship him and love him, not to think about themselves all the time. Put themselves on a pedestal. But they should be putting Jesus on a pedestal. He's the one that deserves to be put up, up high on a pedestal, not yourself. Jesus, if it, I thank the Lord for every breath He gives me, every heartbeat, and we all should, and for the roof over my head and food He gives me, and clothes on my back, and everything, because everything is good is from the Lord. Jesus. I just praise Jesus' holy name. He's the one that deserves to be praised, guys. We can, the Bible says, I think the Bible says we can do nothing good without the Lord helping us, or His Father God helping us. I love you guys. I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys.